previously on Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Gluttony freaked out. We've told you, you're an important candidate for sacrifice. We need you to keep your strength up, understand? So, dig in, Dr. Marco. You know what? Oh, no. I've been sitting here a while, trying to decide what you mean by sacrifice. Trying to figure out right? why I'm here. Right? Right? What does it mean? We all have a little Dr. Marco in us. We know it's connected to the truth. Just gonna guess that in true anime form, they're going for the power of God. Sacrifice fits in really well to the mechanics of the show. They're gonna give up the people who have been exposed to the truth to gain something. I'm fairly certain that what you're doing right now is using this land and its people to form a giant transmutation circle. And your hope is that the end result will be the creation of a philosopher's stone. Am I wrong? So close, not quite. But you're on the right track. Then what is it? So, I feel like the thing that's correct about that is probably the giant circle. But the Philosopher's Stone, unlikely, because they already seem to be able to make them. Or they, they have a bunch of them. A giant Philosopher's Stone, maybe. In true anime form, a giant mecha Philosopher's Stone. I don't I have no idea. I give up. Which is it? Agree to work with us and kill everyone in this country. Or refuse to work with us and watch everyone in your beloved village die. That's just how all you humans are. You put emotions before common sense. I killed a man who was like that once. All I had to do was make myself look like his wife and he was helpless. He couldn't even fight me. Humans are so easy to take advantage of. Lucky us. Episode 24, Inside the Belly. I'm sure that refers to gluttony. That speech felt like a classic villain mistake. She's talking the doctor out of it. The illogical thing is not wanting to save the village. The illogical thing seems to be trusting them to do what they say they'll do. Uh, they don't give a crap. I mean, if they have their way, it'll be the world and the village. Probably. But, like, he probably knows it on some level. He may just have been buying time, making that agreement, just seeing where things go. The humans seem to be giving you quite a bit of trouble lately, don't they, Raph? Hmm. Who's speaking? And yet you seem happy. Yes, I won't deny it. This has been enjoyable. I've been alive for 60 years, and now here I am in the ultimate position of power. Things are changing. The time may be approaching when we have to move over for the younger generation. Don't you see? Listen to yourself, Rat. You've been around these humans for far too long. You may be right, Pride. It is Pride, I was wondering. One thing that's coming to my mind while watching this is, in the last episode I think it was, they talked about how Bradley doesn't give you the humunculus feeling, that he feels human. The fact that Bradley says he's lived for 60 years, it would make sense if he has learned to enjoy being a human, right? Or if he's somehow developed more human tendencies as he's gone on. Like he has a family, he has a, a, a job, let's call it, like a really high level position in the world. Whether or not he started out as some kind of fake human, it seems like he's really like learned how to become it. And there's probably some enjoyment that comes out of that. Like, you don't become good at things you don't enjoy, typically. So that is a really cool color for Bradley. You know, he's already an awesome character, but to think that he actually has a foot in each world. He has a foot in Father's humunculi world, but he has a very solid foot in the human world. That explains a lot, and it's really cool. I hope you will stop this foolishness and remember who we are and what we must do. I won't tell Father what you've said tonight. He might be inclined to see it as treason. Anyway, right. about what me. Don't worry about that. I have access to military information after all. I know where he is. Such a great scene. I love the spider imagery too. It's like, who, who's playing who? Like, who's laying the trap? Especially with Roy Bradley, I feel like. Is Roy playing into Bradley's plans or is Bradley playing into Roy's plans? Speaking of gluttony. What was that? The huge blast. Colonel, what's going on? I'm going stop! Get out of the blast radius. Damn, he looks cool. Lieutenant. That was the panda. Don't provoke him. He just threw it. He had another monster hidden inside his belly. He's swallowing up everything in sight. Alchemy can produce something like that. How disgusting! Let's he still go. got the we eye. Have to bring him down. But we worked so hard to catch one of the homunculi. Survival is our first priority. Besides, he knows our names and faces now. It would be foolish to let him leave here alive! Does this mean that they have a true power? Like they have an extra layer of power? Because that's insane. We didn't see it from Lust, necessarily. Although she didn't really have much of a chance. I 
swallowed it? Uh-oh. Hey, that worked well! Think you could do better? Be my guest! Or we can just leave you behind, Colonel! You're the one he really wants! <laughs> Those trees over there! Spread out! How do you beat something that can consume everything? for the Mustang decoy. Doesn't sound like he's very happy about it. Nice. You expect me to run away and leave this to you, Elric? If you stay, you'll just get in our way! Yeah, leave! They're right. He won't be any use here. Sorry. How did this idiot make Colonel? Right now, you need to go and do your job. The head of the military is a homunculus. Don't you think you should do something about that? The head of the military? You aren't talking about Fuhrer Bradley, are you? The car looks full. You go ahead. You dumbasses! You can't really believe <laughs> and let a couple of children fight this battle for us. I mean, they're no ordinary children. Here, Edward. I want you to take this. You do know how to use it, don't you? That's a weapon for killing people. Yes, but it's also a weapon for protecting your lives. <sighs> it's your hands. They weren't meant to kill. Dying, okay? I'll take it. Interesting. Yeah, normally I think it wouldn't be a big deal just for Ed to have a gun like he is in the military, but there's something symbolic about it too. I think it has something to do with the fact that Ed in many ways feels outside the military and that's been something important because of our knowledge about the Ishval War. And even war aside, Ed has sort of used the military as something that conveniences him or is a means to his goals. But him taking the gun, I don't know, there's something to that. I felt it. Especially after the whole Winry incident, which they cut to. Also, about Roy, I think it's kind of good he's not involved. Like, he's done so much. Let the Elric brothers do their thing. And Link. Ling is certified badass at this point. I feel like you gotta like feed Gluttony something nasty or something. My lord. You gotta feed him something bad. Feed him at his own game? I don't know. Let's go. I said go! Damn, what are they thinking? Those three are gonna get themselves killed. Nah, they'll be alright. Where are you, Mustang? You killed Lust! You will pray! Said we'd stay and all, but that's seriously freaky. He seems to be a bit angry. How are we gonna catch him? What was that? A dog? That's not. Stop a... it! Yeah. Now, Gluttony. <laughs> a talking dog? Hey, long time no see. Zambi? Yeah. This is bizarre. Yes, it was the best paper in the class. He chose to write an essay all about you, actually. Mom, can I read it to you guys? Automatic A. At the table, mind your manners, dear. Reading your essay at a table is bad manners? Man, Bradley's family is way more sophisticated than mine. My family, no feet on the dinner table. Bradley's family, no reading your A-plus paper at the table. This is making me feel low class and I don't like it. He works hard all the time, and everything he does is for our country. The people of Amestris are always in his heart. He dedicates his life to making them happy. He deals with all sorts of problems each day, so everyone in our country can live a good life. But no matter how busy he gets doing his job, my dad never forgets his family. He loves me and my mother very much. He always looks out for us. My dad's a good man. He always listens to me when I talk to him. He's always kind and protects our family. And that is why I love my dad, the end. Cute. Thank you for that, Salim. Very much. Salim. Kind of a humanizing episode for Bradley. Like, I think part of that is sinister because we know the, the contrast, right, between what Salim is saying and what Bradley actually is. But I think part of it, too, is that, you know, maybe he actually is a really great father. Maybe he actually is, in some ways, a good leader. This is actually a thought that I think would make a lot of people uncomfortable. Even the worst people, there's a temptation to assume that just they're just balls of evil, right? But I think that even the worst people probably had humanizing traits, which is kind of scary. It's scary because you worry that your thoughts will lead you down a path where you'll be okay with their terrible deeds. But I don't think that has to be the case. I think if anything, allowing nuance for all people is a defense against the evil of others. Because putting people in binary categories of good or bad, it creates blind spots when your definition of people is not as malleable. I feel like I see this a lot. Like I see people pick 
pick particular individuals to hate. What that means is they also are not capable of conceding when the person does actually good things. You know what I mean? And it goes the other way too. Like if you if you like someone, people make excuses for their bad behavior. It's never totally good or totally bad. It's like there are just individual actions. And even more complicated, it's it's actions over time. And sometimes I think it would be more useful, just practically speaking, to judge individual actions rather than the individual person. But the problem is it's way more difficult. It takes a lot of mental energy to hold that space. And it's a lot to ask of people. Blinding me, that's not playing fair. People have been trying to assassinate me since I was a kid. Under the circumstances, you can't blame a guy for learning how to fight dirty. So, have you had enough yet? Are you going to come with me quietly now? I just want whatever information you can give me on becoming immortal. Or shall we go again? You scum! A mere human like you can't condescend to me! You seem to underestimate humans, and that's a mistake! Nice! Got him! <gasps> Close one. I've had enough of you! Get away! Wow, imagine just trying to kick a thing with teeth in his stomach. Just let me take a right to the other guy! Not today! Uh -oh. Stay out of my way, guys! I'm busy! <laughs> Another foolish human. Go for it! He loves his trick. Ling! What? I can't let him eat a sacrifice! Did Envy just... sacrifice himself? Whoa! What is going on? This is crazy. Brother. <sighs> what does it mean to be swallowed by gluttony? I mean, it's the eye, right? They didn't just disappear. They're not being consumed. They must exist in some form still. But what about Envy, though? I don't know. It just seems like he got blasted and disintegrated. Although we've seen Lust disintegrate before, too. And she came back. You'll have to make do with my bed. My lord, I have to go to him. Idiot girl. What can you do in your condition? You need auto mail. I think now would be a good time to find out who we can trust and who we can't. More chess moves? For all we know, the Fuhrer is a homunculus. I can't very well ignore that. Besides, we just left children out on a battlefield to do our fighting. If they're brave enough to fight, how can I just sit here and wait? Admiring looks from Hawkeye continue. <laughs> can you imagine the look on Edward's face if he heard you talking back there? I was only repeating what you already said. I have to admit, this is unexpected. Given the situation, this is fairly bold action for you to take, Colonel. Like hell it is. I'm just getting the ball rolling, nothing more. Besides... You need as many people on your side as you can get your hands on now, Colonel. It's taken long enough, but I think I might finally begin heeding his advice. Does that advice include... Get yourself a wife? Have you noticed the... Admiring glances you've been receiving from Hawkeye? Lieutenant General Raven! I'm sorry. I haven't had time to introduce myself. I've been very busy since my transfer. I'll say. You were fine until you were sure you'd won, then you blew it. So I finished too weak. Yes, you can't be ruthless enough. You're not like Raven that way. Lieutenant General Raven? From Central? He's an exceptional soldier, but too sentimental. From what I've heard, he'll even tend to his wounded men himself, which leaves his whole line of command in disarray. You don't deploy your king to tend to the pawns, do you? How dare he say something like that about me? <laughs> I told him. I was transferred to Central because of the compassion I showed my men in the line of duty. That border-dwelling old cooch should keep his trap shut. Another chess move here. Actually, General Grumman told me that if that story made you angry, it meant you were still a good and just man, and that you were the officer one could come to for support in case of an emergency. Uh, uh, I can't believe it. That old fox got me again, didn't he? I know that chess conversation applied to this, uh, this guy, but I'm wondering if it doesn't also apply to Roy as well, finishing strong. I don't know if this is actually a thing, but I, I feel like one risk for Mustang is impatience, maybe? He is a patient guy, we've seen that, he's done things very methodically, but I feel like that impulse is there. We'll just have to wait and see. 
It's time for my meeting. Come on, you can walk with me. I find conversing with the citizens around here quite difficult, actually. It's a mistake to dismiss the value of the word on the street, Colonel. I know, but most of it's just mindless drivel. Like, Scar was seen feeding a stray cat, or immortality has been discovered. Or maybe that's mindless dribble Bradley is a homunculus. Who knows? <laughs> uh. <laughs> I see. Uh. You've got no sense of humor, do you? At least that bit of gossip will give us something to talk about over tea. Huh? I, I couldn't possibly attend something like. <laughs> Go on. Tell your little joke. You know, the one about the Fuhrer being a homunculus. Oh, no. Please, go ahead. What, Colonel Mustang? <laughs> got, got your tongue? Let's suppose for a moment that I was actually <gasps> as you say. Well, now, would that be so bad? Ah, I understand now, Hughes. When you said that we were in trouble, you didn't mean the danger was closing in on us. No, you meant the danger was coming from us. Yeah, who's playing whose chess game here? Well, Full Metal, it looks like we've landed ourselves in the pit of hell. Where am I? Yeah, where are you? Blood? What? What is this place? This was a twist I did not expect. I did not expect Ed to go inside of Gluttony and... Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to see where it goes because I feel like the show doesn't let you down with these kind of metaphysical things. Last episode when I saw the eye emerge out of Gluttony's stomach, I immediately wondered what was the connection to the truth. And so I'm glad that it seems we're going to be able to explore it here a bit. This was yet another great episode. I mean, so much happened. It felt long to me in a good way. You get a lot of Bradley, you get you get the whole action sequence with Gluttony, and you get Envy joining the fray, which was unexpected. You get Roy's journey into hell, as he called it, and then ending with Ed and Al who knows where. Not to mention you had Dr. Marco, you had the coroner, and his little mini thing with Lanfan. It's just stacked. Things are heating up, so to speak. <laughs> but that's the end of this episode. I'll see you guys next time for episode 25.